Okay, this is the next update. Um, so I just want to show the process. This is after, well, last night I glued this grout down, the first layer. So I want to show this because some people were wondering how it turns out. So this is the kind of grout that I'm using. It comes in a bag and then I just change it into a pail and from Lowe's and I, I keep refilling the pail. And then I'm using this small sifter so you can see what it looks like. And it's actually quite a bit finer than Woodland Scenic's ballast. And if you think about it, ballast or rocks in N scale are not uh, the size that Woodland Scenics' smallest ballast is. It would be smaller because it's N scale. So um, this is closer to scale than any Woodland Scenics. And, uh, you know, I'll just show you. Let's grab. We've got uh, a Scenic Express one, and this is the finer, the finest one from Woodland Scenics. Now, just put a little bit of this stuff here. That's how you, you put it on. And this right here is the container, and you understand what I mean when I show you this, that I use because this is very light. It doesn't move it around. So this is a glued portion. I had a track here uh, that's not glued, so I sifted it on and then I removed the track and then I'm gonna come back with PL 400 or hot glue, it's your choice, to glue the Cato unit track down. Some people don't glue their track down. I do. I don't put a lot of glue on the turnouts and I also put a little bit of tape over where the ballast would be able to get into the points. So I use a, I think it's a three inch paintbrush. So when I sift it on and it goes all over the tracks and I come by and get it off of in between the tracks and I get it completely soaking wet like I rain over the whole layout, and this is 50-50 um, because it's being refilled from a 50% bottle of water and alcohol. And the reason I use this is because alcohol um, evaporates quicker than water. And there's glue in the ballast because how the ballast is applied is you would put it on uh, your grout is put on your tile and then you wet it uh, with a sponge and then the next day it's hard rock hard so the glue is is part of that the only things you need are this paintbrush uh, water alcohol mix I'm using you could use just water a sifter and the grout or ballast itself when I put this stuff on if you look I can see how big the rocks are. This is the fine stuff. This stuff is now, you know, 20 some dollars a container and people are putting it on the edge here and then they're scraping it out of the middle. The ideal way is to have none. But what I like about this is Cato track, as you know, is gray colored, gray and black. And this is supposed to be Los Angeles or um, Las Vegas. Wyoming depending on the situation but you can get any color you want whereas this comes in a very obnoxious tan color um, this gray or black for cinders and those are your three choices unless you're painting it somehow or dyeing it and this is very light 
and it doesn't stick well to here without putting a lot of glue on. Uh, you're putting um, scenic glue uh, with a scenic sprayer from Woodland Scenics or white glue or what have you, and you're spraying the glue onto the rails. And what ends up happening is it gets completely, um, it attracts dirt and it's very hard to clean your track afterwards. Whereas when this is sprayed on here and we brushed all of the stuff off in between and I also, um, when it's wet w with this, I use a shop vac and it takes anything that's loose off. You can take a smaller vacuum and go in between. And it's not that I'm not gonna ballast the track in between. The big thing is I don't want the ballast to stick to this inside edge of the rail because that will cause a derailment. Now let's say that that did. I would take a little flathead screwdriver, the same as you would if you were using Woodland Scenics and just scrape that and you'd have to check that afterwards and you check that by just rolling a car and seeing oh here's a bump what have you but it actually changes the color or um, tones it down here's an example where there's some more now remember this is the first coat if you go too thick the water alcohol mix cannot get through um, the grout and so the top layer will be glued, but the bottom layer won't, and then it would just fall off. So I like to put it on really nice and thin. So you see I've missed some areas where there's just the painted board. That's no problem. Just take the sifter, put more on, and put another coat. But I'm doing it in, in layers or in thin, um, you know, a day apart to dry. That's overkill but that's basically what I'm finding is working the best for me. You see over here, when the brush came by, it took lots, big chunks off, no problem. So once I've got the middle uh, portion completed to my liking, then I'm gonna come to the track and get it on there where it's taking that gray tone away and giving me, in my case, this Navajo brown color. And then the this is a difference. This is one that's ballasted, and this is one that isn't ballasted. This is one that's ballasted. It's depending on um, what you like, but I want it to be a tan color. I have used no paint on this track. I don't have any masking tape on this track. Um, there's not glue being sprayed all over my backdrop or my buildings or the rails making them dirty. You just basically would take a block to clean off anything that was on the top uh, the next day and it's good to go because it's thinner it's not causing issues with the rolling stock and what I'm going to do after is once these are kind of a, a color that makes sense to me then I'm going to take an airbrush and I'm going to spray some black you know, basically oil drop uh, kind of colors in between. I did that before, uh, Chris did that for me on my Unitrack, but once this is tan, I'm gonna do that same kind of sections of, I guess, uh, grease or oil drop uh, spills in between the rails. But for the most part, I'll have a tan color. Okay, if that makes sense. Um, I'm making sure that the water and glue and the ballast is not getting in the side of the switch machine underneath in the Kato. That wouldn't be good, same as any process. But the bag of this stuff costs $26 and we're still on the first bag. I have completely done the whole layout, like I'm not talking ballasting, just the whole scenes. This darker color here is that Navajo brown. So when I wanted two-tone mountains on my Las Vegas modules that sit here, you use this because you're using so little of it. $26 one time or $20 for each one of those. 
And the reason that you use so much of it is because you're piling it on the side and it wants to fall off anyway. When you move these modules around to shows, that stuff, you can glue it, take, take a better, uh, make a, a better effort to have it stay on. But I have never been happy with um, the Woodland Scenics ballast. It's the wrong color. It's too large. It's too messy to my track. My track runs perfectly. I get everything right the way I want. And then I ballast and then it's no good. So um, this is the surefire way for me. And that gives you some variety for what color you want to make your, your yard. I'm gonna come by with uh, little drops of uh, Mod Podge and then my static grass machine and put uh, some static grass uh, weeds in between once these layer is built up. So um, this is after one day, one coating. This will be a platform for the Union Station that will sit here for Los Angeles. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come by with a sifter and do a second layer and then brush it off again as much, but it'll, it'll make it uh, more tan in the next coating and then completely wet it with alcohol again, wait a full 24 hours and then come back the next night and I'll probably have very small areas that I've missed and then I want, I can start with the painting of the grease spills and that with a, a kind of a dark black color. All right, so I know this is kind of probably a boring video, but uh, to me it's a very important video. Have a, have a good one and I will have another update for you soon.